Hi guys, Brian from OldCamReview.com. Um, I got another review for you today. I'm gonna go over a little bit on the uh, Yoshika Electro 35 line of cameras. I don't have all of them. I have a couple here, um, and uh, you know there's are there are variations in, in specs and stuff like that. I'm just gonna give you a, a quick basic overview. If if some of my stuff is uh, is off or wrong here, you know uh, I, I apologize. But I'm gonna give you sort of like the best I, I have on the information. Um, uh, and I'm going to go over through, as, as, you know, more of a walk around here than, you know, a real <coughs> technical review of these cameras. Uh, what I have here <coughs> on my left is the, uh, the original Electro 35. Um, and this is when, when the, uh, the line first came out. The Ashika Electros are a rangefinder fixed lens, I'm sorry, a fixed lens uh, rangefinder camera. Um, the Yoshikas were really nice. They came with actually a very fast lens. Um, and, and the, the Electro 35s, they came in on a 1.7 lens, which gives you uh, really nice options for low light uh, photography. Good uh, camera for, uh, uh, for getting into the whole rangefinder game if you, if you really are into, you know, uh, seeing what the rangefinder uh, sort of workflow is like. Um, the Yoshika Electro is a great way to, to get started in it. Um, it really gives you a feel for the focusing, how, the handling of the camera, your field of view and all that stuff. Um, I really like it. I've been very uh, very happy with my Electros. The, the, you know, I've seen certainly more spe spectacular work than what I've done with them come out of them, uh, but the lens is really, for what it is, really is a spectacular lens and, uh, and for the money I think it's really hard to beat. Um, again, what we have here is an original Electro 35, and then we have the uh, Electro 35. This is the GTN uh, version. The GTN is basically a black version of the GSN. The GSN is a silver camera. Um, it's, it's an evolution of this, uh, this Electro 35 here, um, where it has a, um, uh, a, an actual hot shoe instead of a cold shoe. Um, that was the major difference. Uh, there are some metering differences and stuff like that, and uh, some updating of the electronics, etc., like that, and some some design stuff as well. Um, th these are fixed lens rangefinders. You can't swap out any lenses, so uh, you kind of you got what you got. And uh, the lens again, it's a 1.7 lens, and it's the Color Yashinon DX 1.7 45 millimeter uh, lens. So it's really nice for street shooting. You sort of get that. Uh, world as you see it view coming out of these cameras. Um, nice big piece of glass. Let me get the lens cap off here. Nice big piece of glass. Um, you know, uh, again, you you're not looking through the glass, obviously, because it's a rangefinder, and you're looking through this portion right here, uh, so you have a little bit of parallax here. So what you're seeing and what the lens takes are two different, slightly different things, um, but the way you focus is uh, via this knob here, and when you look through the viewfinder, you get what they call a split image. So if you'll have two parts of the image here, and then when these things finally meet up together as one, that means that whatever you're looking at is in focus. So it's a very precise uh, focusing method um, and uh, something really easy to work with. And you get a nice uh, big clear picture through the viewfinder. Also, your view, your view of whatever you're taking pictures of is not obstructed when you actually press the shutter button because uh, there, there's no mirror to flip up or down as you would have in, in an SLR. So you can constantly see what's going on in your, your, your vision or your sight picture of whatever you're looking at is never interrupted uh, whenever you're taking the picture. Uh, they're very quiet, very subtle cameras, uh, you know, very uh, not big obtrusive uh, camera that's going to take up, you know, is, is going to be right there in somebody's face. It's small and it's very unassuming. It doesn't look like a big professional camera. It looks like you're, you know, just kind of walking around in the streets taking a picture. Um, some features of the camera, you know, it's all manual uh, wind and stuff like that with an electronic shutter. Uh, and it's basically an aperture priority only camera. You don't have any option to, shut to set shutter speed <laughs> on this camera whatsoever. Uh, what you can do is you adjust your aperture and it'll adjust the, uh, the shutter speed to match. Although it does give you these um, slow and over um, uh, LEDs right here. I'll see if I can get them to go for you. Yeah, there we go. 
So they're slow and over, so that means I'm both slow and over. So, <laughs> it's, uh, um, but I'm kind of right in the middle of there. So, uh, when your exposure is overexposed, it's gonna it's gonna let you know and it's gonna light up light up the uh, the red LED, and then you you turn your uh, your aperture until that goes out. And if your aperture is slow, uh, it'll it'll tell you right here, and then you adjust it to where that light actually goes out. Um, these cameras do suffer what they call the uh, POD or the pad of death um, and uh, it is a problem uh, on, on many of the cameras. I I think I've had it on every single camera I've had. I, I usually work around it with very good results. Uh, I haven't had a, ever really had a problem. Usually what it is is the the there's a, some contacts inside the camera that over time you know the, the pad deteriorates and there's there's a little uh, rubber pad that um, uh, sort of goes out of line with uh, some of the metal contacts and you can have problems uh, with the, the metering exposure here but again you can work around it and if you see it you know it's probably worth getting it fixed there's a um, couple places on the web that advertise to fix it usually it's around uh, I think 50 to 80 dollars to get it fixed and I think it's probably worth it uh, you know get the, the camera sent in gone over um, and you know if you have it you know the camera you know CLA clean lubricated and adjusted and have the pad of death fix and all that stuff you can have a camera that's going to last you another 50 60 years if they make film that long um, other than that yeah you wind it you you set your uh, your um, uh, you set your f-stop your your aperture setting uh, and then you know the camera takes care of the shutter speed you have your ISO settings up here um, and it goes uh, from 25 ASA 25 up to 1000 so uh, you know you have some good latitude there you're not going to be uh, you know for, for your average you know street shooter and stuff like that I think you'll be okay uh, it does take a battery uh, it is a proprietary battery so you got to do some some work actually if you go to my um, blog oldcamreview.com I believe I give you some links to uh, where you can get batteries for these and if you don't I'm going to have them up uh, if I don't have that link up there I'm going to put it up there I'll have to double check, but I do, do I did do a written review of this camera, uh, actually in my Hymatic 9 review as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, just stay tuned. I'll, I'll attach some links, and I'll actually I'll see if I can put them below in the uh, in my notes here on the uh, on the video. Um, there is a battery check light here. Right here, you press this red button, and the battery check light goes on here, which is kind of nice because it also illuminates your shutter count, how many pictures you've actually taken. So, uh, when you're taking pictures and you want to, you know, if you're, if you're outside or at night or whatever and you have trouble seeing, you just press the button and it lights up and you can see how many pictures you've actually taken, which is really nice. It does have a self timer, and it, uh, you know, you ba basically there's, um, actually, if you look here on this camera, it's kind of nice. Um, you can put the, uh, when you adjust the the f-stops here you can see it goes from outside there's a little uh, little uh, picture of the sun uh, cloudy is so you're going to go sort of like uh, midway you know on uh, your f-stops that puts it at f4 and then indoor it's saying put it you know wide, open or wide up to f.1.7 so uh, you're going to have you know it kind of gives you a little bit of a I guess a sunny 16 guide type thing uh, so zone metering I guess sort of um, you can you know again with this one has the hot shoe so you have the auto mode you can set it on um, bulb or um, or flash uh, so it's gonna sync your flash because uh, you have the, the hot shoe there um, nice thing a lot of people actually also get stuck sometimes is the uh, there's this button here is a shutter lock so you put it to L and you can't you can't take a picture because you have the shutter lock, you flip that off, and then you can take your picture. Uh, rewind right here on the camera, and when you want to open it up, here, you just flip open the, uh, actually, to rewind your film, you press this button here, and then you rewind here. Uh, and then once you're, you want to take the film out, you lift this up and you give it a little pop, camera opens right up. And uh, it does have a, a copal, uh, electric copal shutter. Uh, inside, so it, the camera is very quiet and uh, uh, really doesn't make a lot of noise when you take a picture. And there you go. So not not too noisy, very very unobtrusive. Uh, the camera, you know, sort of like a like in its style and in setup. Uh, definitely not like a quality, but uh, really, like I said, a great intro into the rangefinder world. Um, so this is the Electro 35 GTN. I'll show you a little bit of the original Electro 35, almost identical in setup. Um, a little bit sort of older look to it. Everything here on the top is metal. When they went to the Electro 35 GTN, 
to make it all black they actually used a lot more plastic so the the GSN is actually believe it or not better quality uh, you have more metal pieces on it uh, the GTN looks cooler but uh, has more plastic I don't know I, I, I don't know it depends what you what you go for I, I think the cool look is cool but you know it's nice to have the better quality and actually the GTN commands a premium over the uh, the GSN so between the two I don't think you're gonna go wrong with either one but uh, you know check for that uh, you know the the problem with the, the metering etc um, this one here let's see how my metering is do I have the pad of death problem on here actually I think I have a dead battery here no I have a good battery but oh, you gotta wind it in order to get your um, to get your, uh, your metering going let's see well, this might have the problem too but well in any case um, yeah nice feeling camera it's pretty comfortable to hold you know your f-stops here can all be done from here and then you have you know your focus here and the focus should work smoothly if you have any problems or jamming or anything like that you might want to walk away from the camera these cameras can be had fairly cheaply um, you know 50 you know 50 bucks somewhere around there this one to open the back you don't lift this here on the original uh, Electro 35 there's a little tab here and you pull that open and then open up the camera so there are some slight differences between the camera the lens is essentially the same lens um, you know, f1.7, 45 millimeter. Uh, the camera, the operation is essentially the same. Um, really nice, comfortable cameras to hold. They 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 work really well. I do like the pictures that come out of them. Um, I also have a uh, Konica Hymatic uh, 9, which I'm going to probably review later. Um, I find actually the Konica to be a little bit better quality than this one. Um, but uh, you know, overall, like if you can get one of these cheap, go for it. And if you want to spend some money for a uh, CLA worth it um, these cameras are awesome and uh, anything they make a great heirloom and then they they're good workhorses so I would take them out use them shoot them and uh, again nothing against Lomography but if you can get a real old camera with some real style why not and uh, get the, some of that Lomographic look uh, with a real old camera I don't know I, I like keeping the old stuff alive so um, anyway that's about it Brian from Old Camera Review again the Yashica Electro 35 line of cameras I recommend um, so find yourself one there's tons of them out there check the bay check you know eBay cl classifieds whatever I'm sure you can find one um, just go through the camera check it out uh, make sure you know everything's working and if not you know if, if it's you know marginally working you know you can buy it and send it out and get it serviced I, I really think it's worth it and I think it's worth putting money into this old stuff and and keeping it alive so uh, anyway that's it again Brian oldcamreview.com uh, any requests I try and take um, if you have a camera that you would like me to review you send it to me I promise I'll send it back I'm trying to get a hold of some other cameras I've had some requests for other ones like the uh, the uh, 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 contacts G series I just don't have them so <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm working on getting one uh, but uh, if, you know, if anybody has one they want to send me I'll certainly go through and do a review for you on that uh, and I promise like I said I'll send back the camera uh, if there's anything else I have a lot of cameras I got some, a bunch of review, more reviews coming so uh, uh, stick with me guys and I appreciate everybody who subscribed and I appreciate anybody who's commented if you have questions for me on the cameras if I don't know the answer I'll try and uh, research it and find out for you um, anyway that's it I appreciate all your support guys thanks for watching Thank you.